What's going on everyone, it's time for yet another Remnant 2 build. This one today brings the ridiculous power of the Engineer class and combines it with self-healing and defense. If you want to deal over 6,000 damage a shot against Annihilation and melt him quickly, then this is it right here. If you want to deal so much impact that bosses can be staggered backwards several times over, then this is the build right here. If you want the best dodge in the game with crazy iframes and top-notch speed, then this is the build right here. Become the space technician and show Apocalypse Mode who the real boss is. Engineer will be our prime class for this build as it offers the main item we'll use for our damage. This class as prime grants the ability to overclock your different turrets, granting each of them infinite ammo for a time, faster fire rate, and 25% more damage. This is essential for carrying the heavy weapon as long as possible and chunking down boss health. Your passive perks increase skill damage by 50%, skill crit chance by 10%, and you get 25% more weak spot damage. Then, the best possible dodge in the game. When carrying a heavy weapon, you become faster and get what feels like double iframes on your dodge, making up for mistimed evades and making the gameplay easier overall. The last and most important perk is that taking a relic will grant some of your heavy weapon ammo back. Since we want to use mainly the heavy weapon here, you can put the thing away, use about two relics, and be almost back at full charge immediately. Great for longer fights. As for the skill, you want impact cannon. This massive burst machine will shoot one hard-hitting slug at a time, but man is it powerful. So strong that it often staggers bosses even in one or two hits, dealing thousands of damage each time it connects. Manage to hit weak spots and you're going to get a possible of 4 to 6,000 damage. For large groups of enemies outside boss fights, you will want to place the thing down as single fire is terrible when you're being swarmed. On the ground, it will deal this pound that nullifies anything near it. Just make sure the impact cannon is in your hands for boss fights to get the most benefit. Your subclass will need to be Handler. This class grants 30% more ranged and skilled damage, helping to get your heavy weapon blasting out high numbers. You also gain more movement speed when near the dog and can control your trusty pal by sending him towards the target. The dog will die from time to time, but he has enough health to be very helpful, and taking a relic will heal him up. Be diligent, and he can put in some work by applying bleed and taking all of the enemy's attention. For this skill, you want Support Dog. This grants you a decent amount of healing each second and increases your movement speed by 25%. Because we already have good damage with the cannon, there really is no need to run Attack Dog. Instead, the speed can help you outmaneuver your opponents and position yourself better in fights. Use this before bowling out your cannon, and you'll really be moving. For the armor, we want something that's a bit techy and a bit spaceman. Since weight doesn't matter here as the turret in your hands prevents you from having a bad dodge, we can be heavy without much issue at all. In fact, it's weird because sometimes the heavy dodge can feel better than the medium, if you get used to it. Lido Mark 1 helmet, technician body plate, technician greaves, and Lido Mark 1 gloves. This setup provides you with a good amount of armor and looks amazing as a space technician. For the relic, you want to run the shielded heart. We have healing from our handler skill and from a ring, so we don't really need healing from the relic as well. Instead, the shielded is going to grant us amazing protection for 20 seconds. And since we need to take relics to heal the dog and gain ammo back, you can feel free to use these whenever possible. Worst comes to worst, you run out of relics, but we still have healing, so be as greedy as you want. For the relic fragments, you want skill damage, weak spot damage, and consumable speed. The skill damage ups both the dog and your heavy weapon. The weak spot damage is there because, well, the impact cannon hits weak spots and the numbers get really crazy if you do. Then the consumable speed is to ease up relic usage and stop relics from hindering the pace of battle. You can check to make sure this affects the relic usage by checking your advanced stats as well. For the main weapon, I run Ford's Scattergun for excellent impact, knocking enemies away from you if they get too close. A very fun and solid weapon that can control battle well. Equip the Stasis Beam mod so you can apply slow to bosses and completely freeze regular enemies. This does indeed work on elites and makes many tough encounters a complete joke. Are you up against an opponent that's tough to take down? Well, now you can freeze them, sometimes even in midair, for 10 seconds, and it charges up quickly. Then use the extender mutator so the shotgun needs reloaded less and reloads at a good speed when you eventually run out. Had a lot of fun with this weapon setup specifically as it allows you to freeze an enemy, pull out your cannon, and easy aim right at their weak spot. 
For the melee, I ran with the Atom Splitter. It comes from Narud and fits the space theme. As being a massive sword, it hits hard and can be helpful depending on the situations you get in. I threw on Shield Breaker as a mutator because when I run shield, I like to run as much as possible. If you're more of a melee person, you can get a large chunk of shield simply from attacking with the sword. Fun little screw you to enemies as you protect yourself and deal damage at the same time. Your sidearm will be the Rune Pistol. This guy's particularly weak on this build, but we don't need it to deal much damage. I love it as it has an insane amount of bullets in each magazine, which makes it great for boss phases that you have to shoot orbs, like Talratha or Shahala. I also like that its mod marks enemies, leaving a white mark above them, allowing for better visibility of anything near you. Defeating these marked enemies spawns a brand which grants health back when picked up. It can be good, but I don't really see much use in this. However, the marking was fun either way. Then use Bullet Weaver as the mutator to increase the good fire rate and speed of mod generation. Only using it for the mark and bullets, it's nice to get the mod back now and again. As for your amulet and rings, you want more cannon damage and an easy way to get buffs for shield. The Silver Ribbon increases shield damage by 25% and causes you to gain haste for 15 seconds upon using a skill. More damage for a cannon is as ideal as it gets, and haste improves all aspects of combat for a good amount of time, letting you become extremely fast if you want to skip an area or get away from bosses better. Generating Band regenerates 3% of max health per second while shield is active. This is our main way of healing. Because the shield relic grants shield for 20 seconds, it can help you fully heal up after taking damage. Mechanics Cog grants 15% movement speed and one stack of bulwark when carrying an engineer heavy weapon. This is a build where you want to have the heavy weapon active as often as possible. Carry it around for a better dodge and you will gain these two excellent perks as well. Akari Warband makes it so perfect dodges increase critical chance by 15%, crit damage by 15%, and all this for 15 seconds. Since we have arguably the best dodge in the game, we can get this buff easily. And since your iframes are ridiculous, that perfect dodge equates to pretty much guaranteed perk time in boss fights. Rerouting Cable grants a small amount of shield for 5 seconds upon using 25 stamina. This is the cherry on top of the Sunday. If you happen to take damage, you can simply spam dodge 3 or 4 times for a decent chunk of shield, which will activate your regenerating band to heal you back up, and grant the Akari damage buff if an attack is dodged. Heck, even running can activate this if you're in combat and it's so fun to get shield while doing what you would already be doing regardless. Altogether, you have high damage, good speed, and excellent survivability, which is everything you need to beat Remnant 2 Apocalypse Mode. When it comes to traits, we want to have good healing and better skill usage. Flash Caster helps increase mod and skill casting speed, allowing you to pull out the heavy weapon in an instant and command the dog quickly. Fortify grants us more armor, allowing some tank potential and keeping us alive if shield happens to go down. Kinship decreases self-damage, which is nice if in co-op, but otherwise required from taking Handler. Regrowth increases health regen by 1.5 per second, allowing you to heal very quickly with and without the shield. Triage improves your self-healing and allows the regenerating band to be our main source of healing. Vigor so we have health and stamina so we can dodge as much as necessary. Then grab Expertise so your skills cool down quickly and take Glutton to speed up consumable speed. Granting a very quick relic use that feels more natural than it does at non-buff speeds. For your consumable, you want this stuff called Chilled Steam, granting 10% increased movement speed. We're getting several sources of speed boost already, so I figured why not add some more for a really quick build. However, there are times when speed won't matter that much, and then I would use Mud Tooth Stew for extra stamina. We need to dodge constantly to activate our rings, allowing a little extra stamina there if you need to use it. I really love builds that are simple to use, and this one right here is about as easy as it gets. Activate your handler skill, take a relic, and then enter the boss fight. Pull out the cannon, overclock it, and shoot away. You want to aim for weak spots so the damage is massive, and dodge attacks to self-heal, get more damage, and shield yourself. If done correctly, you should never need to put the cannon down until it runs out of ammo. And even then, you can take relics to get the ammo back. I will mention that going for weak spot damage gear can make the cannon hit over 7,000 damage a hit. We have a lot less damage than that for this specific build, but our survivability is excellent. And when hitting over 1,000 damage every single shot, I like to think it's okay to stop focusing on damage that you already have enough of. Abuse the dodge as often as possible, and this build will speed you through the game with relative ease. 
If you did enjoy this build, feel free to leave a like down below. I love Engineer as it's by far the most creative and interesting class added to Remnant 2, and the Impact Cannon adds such an easy way to boost your damage without stacking rings at all. Do be sure to mess with both weapons I had equipped, as they are quite fun and allowed me to control enemies very well. Freezing things for 10 seconds is more than crazy, it's actually broken. Even the annoying trash mobs at the end of the game stand there like idiots while you mow them down. This has been the Space Technician build, and now you can blast your way to victory.